Recent surveys of sprout growers in California and across the United States identified a broad variety of production practices, including types of facilities, types of seeds sprouted, and pounds of sprouts produced. For example, the surveys reported sprouts being produced in buildings, sheds, greenhouses, modified buses, agricultural fields, or a combination of these. Firms were producing about 50 different kinds of sprouts. The most frequently observed products were mung bean, alfalfa, clover, and radish sprouts. Most firms were relatively small operations producing less than 15,000 pounds of sprouts per week. These surveys also identified one or more problems with sanitation and hygiene in at least half of the sprout production facilities visited. Although seed appears to be the primary source of contamination in sprout-associated foodborne illness outbreaks, poor sanitation and inadequate hygiene at the sprout facility will increase the likelihood of sprout-associated foodborne illness. This module will present an overview of one way to produce sprouts the right way. The sprouting facility should be clean, well-maintained, and enclosed. Facility layout should allow separation of seed storage, production, and packaging areas. Traffic flow within the facility should be such that employees are moving from the cleanest areas first, like product packaging, to less clean areas, like seed storage, and not the other way around. Additional information on requirements and recommendations for facility construction is provided in Module 2 and in the GMP materials accompanying this video. Plant cleaning and sanitation are covered in Module 3E. Appropriate personnel practices are discussed in Module 4. Each of these factors should be firmly in place before production begins. Signs should be clearly posted at the entrance of the facility and at relevant locations throughout the facility to ensure visitors and employees are aware and reminded of company policy about hygiene and sanitation. Sprout production consists broadly of the steps shown here. Some firms may add to or omit some of these practices depending on a number of factors including the type of seed being sprouted and the size and resources of the firm. Seed is usually received by the firm in bags or sacks. 50 pound cloth bags are most common. Seed suppliers should visually inspect all bags and pallets upon delivery for evidence of contamination including insects, water stains, and presence of rodent or bird droppings. Bags of seed that have been contaminated with rodent urine will glow when viewed using a black light. Seed sacks and seed that show signs of contamination or excess filth should be rejected. As mentioned in the preceding module, producing a safer product starts with using good, quality, clean, intact seed. Sprouters should purchase seed only from reputable suppliers. They should have good communication with their suppliers and should know as much as possible about where and how their seed was produced. Seed bags usually bear a tag listing the following information, supplier name, supplier address, lot number, seed type name, and country of origin. Sprouter should retain these to facilitate traceback in the event of a problem. If microbial testing of seed is done, either by the supplier or the sprouter, results should be reviewed. The seed storage room should be clean and sanitary and separate from the rest of the facility. It should not be used to store equipment, chemicals, or personal items. Storage area temperature and humidity should be controlled. Seed stores best in a cool, dry environment. A good rule of thumb is a combination of heat and humidity that equals 100. For example, room temperature of 70 degrees and 30 percent humidity. Seed should be stored off the floor and away from walls to reduce the likelihood of rodent contamination and facilitate inspection for signs of rodent contamination. Open bags should be stored in a receptacle with a tight-fitting lid or otherwise protected from contamination. Seed containers and the surrounding area should be inspected on a regular basis to monitor for pests, and a pest control program should be in place. Seed lots should be kept separate to facilitate traceback should the need arise. Seed lot numbers should be noted and recorded for each batch of sprouts produced. Seeds have been identified as the source of contamination in most sprout-associated outbreaks. Therefore, it is important that sprouters apply an approved disinfection treatment to seed immediately before sprouting. Currently, 20,000 parts per million calcium hypochlorite is recommended for treating seed. Seed disinfection will be covered in more detail later, but the basic steps look like this. Employees handling calcium hypochlorite should take appropriate safety precautions, including wearing protective clothing. A fresh 20,000 parts per million calcium hypochlorite solution should be made for each batch of seed. 
carefully follow all label instructions when mixing and using calcium hypochlorite solution. Additional references are available in the accompanying handouts. It is important to use the correct amount of solution for a known quantity of seed. Too much seed or too little solution will decrease the effectiveness of the treatment. A mixture of one gallon of solution for five pounds of seed should be used to ensure adequate antimicrobial activity. Weigh out a known quantity of seed into an appropriate container and pre-wash the seed with potable water to remove any dirt or debris and then drain. Add the 20,000 parts per million calcium hypochlorite solution to the cleaned seed and stir for 15 minutes at room temperature. Pour off the used chlorine solution and dispose of according to state requirements. Treated seeds should be rinsed with potable water for 10 minutes, changing the water several times as necessary to remove any residue. After disinfection treatment, seeds to be grown in trays are generally pre-soaked in potable water to initiate sprouting. Seeds grown in drums are generally not pre-soaked but placed directly in rotary drums. If seeds are pre-soaked, the soak time should be as short as possible to minimize the opportunity for microbial growth. For some seeds, one hour is sufficient. After pre-soaking, seeds should be rinsed with potable water to remove residues from soaking. Methods used for germination and growth and subsequent harvest and washing vary depending on many factors, including the size of the operation and the type of sprout grown. Sprouters may use rotary drums, trays, growing rooms, or soil trays. Soil trays have some special considerations that will be covered later in this module. Germination and growing times vary with type of sprout, time of year, and germination process used. For example, alfalfa and clover three to seven days, broccoli four to seven days, mung beans three to eight days, radish three to 14 days, and wheatgrass three to 14 days. Germination processes fall into two general categories, rotating drums or trays on racks, generally in a lighted room, and stationary containers, for example, bins, beds, or buckets, in environmentally controlled rooms or freestanding growth chambers, which are often kept dark. In addition, some sprouters germinate sprouts in drums, allow up to 60% of growth to occur, then rinse the sprouts and transfer them to trays, cups, or final packages, such as clamshell-type packages, on a tiered table or rack to finish growing. With this process, sprouts will grow in a more vertical, uniform manner. When purchasing new equipment or remodeling facilities, food safety and ease of cleaning should be a primary concern. Rotating drums are usually hard plastic cylinders measuring approximately 5 feet in diameter by 5 feet deep. Drums are positioned sideways and off the ground with a chain or belt attached to the back of the drum for rotation. Rotation keeps sprouts separated and prevents clumping. The inside of the drum is typically partitioned into quarters with the same plastic. As discussed elsewhere in this video, drums should be designed in a way and constructed of materials that make cleaning easy. Drums and all equipment should be positioned in a way that facilitates cleaning. Typically, alfalfa, broccoli, clover, and radish seed are sprouted in rotating drums. Each drum can hold 8 to 100 pounds of seeds, although 10 pounds of seed per quadrant is most common. Once the seed is placed in the drum, the lid is closed and the drum begins to rotate. Water is sprayed intermittently on the seed to keep the sprouts from overheating, to remove byproduct residues of growth, such as ethylene gas, and to irrigate the product. For instance, seed may receive a water spray every 10 to 15 minutes for 10 seconds. Sprouters should use potable water for irrigation. Air may be blown into the drum to keep the product ventilated. Care should be taken to ensure air does not contain contaminants, such as dust and mold, that can contaminate product. 